Welcome dear participants. In this particular module, we would be looking at the effects of technology on literary genres and we would take up rise of the novel to look at this particular aspect. As far as the effect of technology on shaping a literary genre is concerned, we can say that it is a continual process. Particularly in the later half of the 20th century, this becomes more apparent to us. When we will look at the media and literary genres in the beginning of the 21st century, we would go into deeper details of this aspect. But in this module, we would look at the rise of the novel, which is directly related with certain developments in technology. It is said that literature is a mirror to the society. And we have already seen how technology has changed the ways in which we live, in which we think and we express ourselves. Technology has had a clear impact on our culture as well as on the media which enables us to express ourselves and to understand the expressions of other people. Particularly the impact on culture is able to generate certain cognitive changes in our personalities. At this moment of technological development, we find that the significance of older literary genres is also being questioned. In fact, we have to remember that technology does not provide only a medium. For example, technology does not result into only a printed book or on providing us internet as a platform for social media or for blog writing. Technology also changes our perceptions about literature. It also changes the way we receive literature and at the same time, it also changes our expectations from literature. It encourages a rewriting of a text in ways which are more suitable to technological advancements, making our literature more instant and reachable. At the same time, we find that new formats are also emerging. They may be in the shape of an e-book or writing on a screen with tools which are intelligent. So, we find that technology has a significant impact not only on culture and media, but also on our appreciation and production of literary genres. Every new technology threatens the supremacy of the previous literary experiments. We have seen how with the oncoming of the books, the previous modes of expression through rhymes and versification became very immediately redundant. The cultural supremacy of books again has come to be challenged by computers. It is as early as 1992 that Swain Burkitz has written a book with the title The Guttenberg Allergies in which he has predicted a rapid decline in the popularity and authenticity of the printed book, which would fast become, and I quote, a vestigial order. Burkitt's book was published in 1992. It was a time when the web had not come into picture, but he had said that the new technologies would annihilate the sense of continuity and historical depth as our sense of self will be distributed among random access networks. Historically, there are certain ways in which the impact of technology can be seen. Primarily, we can say that it affect ways in which literature appears to the reading public, to the masses. For example, it may be page setting of prose in comparison to a novel or let us say that when we make a shift from a printed book to an on screen presence of a piece of literature. So, primarily it affects the way literature appears in a particular form and shape to the people. And at the same time, we find that technology also influences the way literature is disseminated among the people. At the same time, we find that it affects the reading habits of the masses 
and encourages them to choose or to prefer a particular genre. It is said that we are somehow organically related to the age of which we are a product. In the same way, we can say that every age also has a preference and a particular choice for a lit particular literary genre. So, we have had the age of drama, we have had the age of poetry prior to that and then we had the age of the novel. But then we find that now even this age of the novel is being challenged and newer literary forms are coming up. Not only because technology has provided us new tools, but also the technology has affected the culture and the cognition of the people and it has changed the reading preferences and habits of the masses and therefore, has encouraged them to look for newer possibilities. The best example to illustrate this idea is to look at how novel as an art form has emerged during the 18th and 19th centuries. During the Victorian times, doctors were often treating patients who had suffered from nervous breakdown. Doctors also often attributed this rising tide to the overstimulation of unprecedented urban concentration. Critics have pointed out that particularly in the western countries, humanity has lived in environments which are being increasingly enframed by artificial technologies. The late Victorian writer Grant Allen had complained about data overload as early as 1890s. During the 1890s, we find that certain technological changes had started to make their impact on the way people were culturally exposed to look at literature and reading businesses. So, at the time we find that morning and evening newspapers had started publishing. There were two postal deliveries also, the telegrams could be sent and received at any hour and then the travelling from one place to another had also become very quick and easy. So, as early as 1890s, we find Grant complaining about data overload. So, we find that the culture was already changing and people had started looking at the opportunities to read things, to receive the reading material be it newspaper or any article or any work of literature in a different way. Interestingly, Grant has complained whereas, his own career was based on new technological platforms for print. He was a failed scientist and therefore, he had started to write populist tracts on sciences and had become established as a writer very soon. Nietzsche had commented that the instruments which we use for writing are not to be treated as simple tools or instruments or contrivance which allow us to express our ideas on a particular medium say a piece of paper. But these writing instruments actively shape the expense as well as they shape and define the limits of what we have to say. If we use a fountain pen or a crayon or a pencil, we write in perceivably different manner and we have different feel in our hands and we also think of different possibilities. So, whereas the style is subjective and therefore, elusive within the process of writing, we find that it is also linked with the tools which spur the creative imagination. And therefore, we can say it with certain assertiveness that technology changes the shape of literature also. With this background, we begin a review of how early novel had developed as an art form to understand the significance of this point which we have been trying to make so far. During the 18th century, we find that a number of cultural, philosophical, socio-political and economic imperatives, changes and influences had led to the rise and subsequent popularity of the genre of narrative fiction, novel, short stories, prose. The rise of empiricism and enlightenment philosophies contributed to the realism of early novels and made the form of novel different from earlier genres of prose like romance. 
and we can look at the impact of philosophers like Locke, Descartes and Hume. Scientific and technological inventions allowed for the emergence of a modern society and then again we can say to sum up that there had been an exponential growth of print culture in 18th century and its effects could be seen in the printing press technologies. So, there was an explosion in printing and dissemination of printed material and the printed items a study says which were only 2000 in number in 1740 had risen to 6500 in the year of 1800. There was a rise of literacy rates also. By 1750s, it is said that 60 percent of the British adult population was literate and literacy among women had also started to grow around this time. However, we also have to be aware that despite basic literacy, the educational system in contemporary Britain was not adequate. So, there was a rise in self-taught readers. And at the same time, we find that certain other social changes contributed to the popularity of books, particularly novels and other narrative fiction forms. And a particular significance is to be given to circulating or traveling libraries, which made books available at a very low cost and which also resulted in a wide readership. So, people at this time used to read either for pleasure or for gaining purposeful knowledge. So, we find that it also resulted into a popularity of narratives which were based on adventure stories, travelogues, accounts of crimes, conduct books, political pamphlets, newspapers, periodicals etcetera. So, classical learning was still limited to the elite who could have a properly defined and regulated education. But because of these changes, we find that there was a rise in the new readership the lower and middle class people, men as well as women had started to learn reading and therefore, we find that suddenly print medium resulted into a particular social revolution. So, we find that technological revolution has also generated a social revolution and this social revolution has raised a particular type of expectancy among the reading public. So, we find that very direct association exists between a technological change and a change in a literary genre. Around this time, we find that various newspapers and periodicals had also started. Among the newspapers, we find that London Gazette was started in 1665, which was an official newspaper of the royalist government and it had a way to manipulate the readers by feeding them a particular opinion. In 1662, a licensing act had already come into existence to prevent the frequent abuse in printing seditious, reasonable and unlicensed books and pamphlets and for regulating of printing and printing press. At the same time, we find that there was some effect of the popish plot and anti-Catholic hysteria during 1678 to 1681 and there was a multiplication of newspapers. So, it is during this time that people were drawn to a particular medium and people wanted to read about things happening around them. They wanted to form their own opinion on the basis of whatever information they were gathering and they wanted that this information should be printed in the format of prose. Not in words, not in the form of a drama, but in the form of plain prose. And this plain prose writing could be made possible only because of the development of a particular technology. The new genres of periodicals was also taken up around this time. So, we find that the technology of the print made possible for people to envisage a particular type of material to be circulated among the people and that was newspapers and very soon we find that the interest of the people were tapped and periodicals were started. So, periodicals were based on the idea of providing material to the people, so that they can think of improving their mind and manners. 
So, they were written in accessible style, a style which could be enjoyed by the non elite readers and therefore, they attracted a large readership. The social ideal was urbanity, good taste, moderation, reasonableness and self control. And later on we find that the female tattler and the female spectators were also started. So, there was a massive market for periodicals among the mercantile and middle classes and therefore, we find that the print medium resulted into a certain alteration in the taste of the people which resulted into authors tapping these needs. At the same time we find that these social changes coincided with the emergence of what is known as a public sphere. The idea of the public sphere was put forward by Jürgen Habermas in his book The Structural Transformation of the Public Sphere published in 1962. His idea of the public sphere is based on the imagination of a place or the sphere of private people who join together to form a public. So, he has talked about the popularity of public coffee houses which became a public sphere for holding conversation, for gossiping, for discussion of news and events. The spread of literacy and the emergence of a public sphere further popularized the idea of the novel which was also supported by the rise of liberal democracy. So, we find that on the one hand there was a growth of industrialization, print industry, railways, development of infrastructure, mining, manufacturing, growth of factories and assembly line mode of production. On the other hand we find that there was a mercantile economy, there was a rise of bourgeois, different trades were coming up and were being established. The traditional societies were breaking up, there was large scale migration from rural areas to urban centers and formation of localities which were segregated along class lines had also changed the demographic structure of traditional societies. Similarly, we find that around this time there was an economic dominance of the bourgeois, the middle class was rising and these can also be understood as the effects of innocent capitalism. It is interesting to refer to a particular book by Ian Watt here, who has discussed the historical and philosophical context within which it was possible for the novel to emerge as a new literary genre. He has talked about the popularity of empirical and rationalist thought. He has also talked about the aspirational model of humanist discourse which was a product of enlightenment and how they gained traction through the development of print culture, the publishing industry, the mercantile economy. So, there was a democratization in production and dissemination of printed material which was necessary as a background for the rise of the novel as an art form. So, we find that by the time the novel as a genre started, technology had changed the world view and people needed a new type of a literary writing. Older forms of literature were not able to accommodate the needs and experiences of the new readership. As these traditional genres, the lyric, the epic or the drama were embedded in a different kind of world view. The novel emerged in response to all these changes in the socio-political fabric and the originality of this genre lay in its break from traditional modes of storytelling conventions. It also encapsulated the experiences of the middle classes and the changes that led to their cultural dominance. At the same time we find that the economic criteria for the production of literature was also changing. There was a development of the idea of authorship and previously it was the publishers or booksellers were dominant and the authors started to be paid on the basis of the number of sheets they wrote on and this practice also favored prose over verse and drama. The word novel itself has been taken up from an Italian word novella which is a tale or a piece of news or something new. So, by the time of we reach mid 18th century, we find that the boundary between fact and fiction had become fluid as far as receiving some type of an entertainment in printed 
manner was concerned. So, we find that the 18th century novels also tap into these resources. They look at history, adventure, memories, fortunes and misfortunes etcetera. The early novels were being written in certain formats and either they were based on the lives of a Picaro, they were being written in the Picaro's tradition or they were using the format of epistolary novels. The novel has been defined as a long prose narrative about largely fictional if usually realistic character and plausible events are a part of it. So, we find that it is around this time that people started to talk about realism in the novel. However, the word realism in a novel has to be understood with certain reservations. Flaubert has defined novel as a fiction that portrays low life. So, this definition also tells us about the closer association with the masses at a time when print technology had made the reception of the novel a possibility. The realism of a novel does not reside in the kind of life it presents, but it resides in the way it presents it. It is constructed by the real everyday world and shape this everyday world takes. It does not only just mirror the ordinary day to day life, but a novel intervenes in the ordinary real world, endows it with a shape and a particular meaning. Novels conjure up a fictitious world that gives the illusion of being applicable to reality. And at the same time, they have a certain structural unity, which enables us to understand the storyline completely, to have an empathetic association with the character and to think that maybe it is a realist representation of our felt experiences. William Congreve was the first to call his own work Incognita or Love and Duty Reconciled, a novel in 1692. The term novel as a new form of prose narrative or a literary genre gained prominence only in the late 18th century. Clara Reeve defines novel as a picture of real life and manners and of the times in which it is written. The novel gives a familiar relation of such things as pass every day before our eyes, such as may happen to our friend or to ourselves to represent every scene in such an easy and natural manner and to make them appear so probable as to deceive us into a persuasion that all is real until we are affected by the joys or distresses of the persons in the story as if they were our own. Main features of a realist novel which became popular in the 18th and 19th century can be listed as being unique stories all the novels which were written and circulated and which became popular in the 18th century and early 19th century had unique stories and plots. They were not duplicating anything. The narrative was grounded in local and also particular socio-cultural environment. The manner of writing was also simple, discursive. It was a natural style of prose and it did not have any pedantic attitudes associated with its production. The focus was normally on present. The past was also seen with the lens of the present, something which has led up to the present circumstances. It represented either the whole life or a longer section of the life of a character or many characters and there was a formation of identity through the passing of time, which gave rise to various novels written in the form of a building's Raman. There was a focus on individuality of experiences and representation of life in a realistic manner. The characters were also ordinary and at the same time they were individuated. We could identify them as independent people. So, during this time, we find that there was a creation of relatable characters, characters with whom we could relate and characters who were caught up in the everyday circumstances of their life. There was also an emphasis on personal identity, formation of consciousness through time 
and there was also an emphasis on interpersonal growth and development. At the same time, in most of the novels, we find that there was a certain causality in the depiction of characters. One event in the life of the character has determined the next one. Similarly, we find that this idea of narrative identity as presented or titled by Paul Ricoeur becomes important for us and it is the structural model of our own life stories which is found in the novels. So, we have a narrative identity with the novels. The concept of individuality was prominent in the novels of the 18th century. The 18th century novel also talked about and was based on personal autonomy and freedom of choice. Through the characters acts and thoughts, the world presented from the point of view of individuals and characters, the reader could make out the way in which these characters talked about having a freedom of choice and also had an autonomy of action. The form of the novel started to capture the shift in consciousness about life and various possibilities which can be made available. The contributions of Henry Fielding, Richardson, Defoe and Stern are known to all of us. The 18th century novels reflected upon the middle class myth that is somebody leaving home, journeying further into the world, socialization, family and marriage, personal growth and development and quest for the true self. And it is around this time that the buildings Raman novels which were very typical of an emergent middle class aspirational journey assumed a new significance for the readers because most of the readers of the middle class could identify and relate with the struggles and experiences of their fictional counterparts. During this time we find that formal realism has remained the dominant mode and the verisimilitude of the realist prose writers of 18th and 19th century has been commented very often by the critics. The rise of capitalism also led to the creation of an urban underbelly and we find that novelists also started to project it. So, we find that whereas on the one hand people were portraying the middle class aspirations and journeys through different means. On the other hand, there were writers who were portraying the urban underbelly in the exploitation which came up with the development of the technology and the growth of the urban centers. So, we can refer to Dickens, Gaskell and Hardy who emphasized the seamy side of the new social order. So, we can say that technological inventions allow for the emergence of a new type of a society. It is on the basis of technological changes and inventions, we find that our understanding of our encumbrances also alters and our expectations in terms of cultural products also change. The perceptions of the writer and about the writers change, the expectations of the masses and their readiness to receive a particular literary genre also change. It is not that simply the tools change, but we find that the circulation methods also change. So, we can say that there is a loop which exists between a technological change and a change in a literary genre. So, even though at the time when novel emerged, this loop between the two was very wide, but as technology has started to progress at a more hurried pace, we find that the loop is becoming narrower. So, we find that now the pace of technological changes has quickened and therefore, we find that the loop which was very wide during the time when novel was being established as an art form has now become a very narrow one and the changes are easily perceivable. When we would look at the type of media we have now in the 21st century and we would review the impact of digitalization on literature, we would find that the narrowness of this loop has really changed the literary genres and our perceptions of it.
थैंक यू